welcome back to our YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to go through a follow along clinch class. Not so much for if you're completely new to clinching. If you've done a little bit of clinching before, this <laughs> class is good for you. Um, we're just going to go through like a little bit more of detail with what to do in the arm position, how to get good control, and also why we're doing these things. Yeah, we're not going to cover everything in the clinch, but we're we're mostly about arm positioning because we cover everything. <laughs> we'll be here for hours, okay? Just mostly what I've been doing actually it's in my really classes much, like this week. Like, like it's probably like 50 years of training. Um, <laughs> like what I've been doing in my classes this week, just talking about inside arm control and also transitioning to head control. Um, but yeah, let's start on that. We'll start with your partner. Yes, you need a partner for this class as well. So stand up, grab your partner, and let's work on some clinch position and some details. We're starting with the inside position. So this is normally when we say inside, outside, let's explain that really quickly. Inside is basically... When I'm looking at my partner, there's like squared stance with clinching, right? When I'm here, my hands are on the inside of my partner's arms, okay? Now, he's on the inside now, right? Inside can mean... Oh, <laughs> inside can mean that I have arms on the elbow crease. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm on the elbow crease, and then now he's trying to fight for inside position. Mm. Um, head, see how I'm on the inside, yeah? His hand is holding on the outside here. So this is still outside position, I'm on the inside, yeah? And this is really uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable for him, this is not so uncomfortable <laughs> for me. And I can have inside position also here, where I grab the back underneath the armpit, I'm still in the inside position here. Yeah, so basically when you're looking visually, your hands just have to be on the inside of your partner's arm. So basically that's what you're going for. Generally, yeah? that's the battle. Yes, that's, that's the battle in the, the clinch, battle. yes. Yeah, that's the battle. Mm -hmm. So what you see him doing like when I was here was him trying to move his arms in. But that's my job now to maintain and shift and control. Try to get on the inside. That's half the battle, but she always wins. With... <laughs> no, I think my arms are a little bit smaller than his, so like I can swim them in faster. Um, <laughs> so we're here in that position. When you're in inside position, your job is to not just not be stiff about it, but be able to maintain this position. Reasons is one for safety, your own safety, not getting elbowed. And also, too, you can um, damage your partner more, yeah? So damaging your partner with good arm control, good head control, breaking their posture, it starts with your good base, good posture, and also what you're doing with your arms. Yeah? Inside, inside, all the time. Always, all always, the time. always. If yeah. you're on the outside, mm -hmm. it's a waste of time. Get yourself yeah. back on the inside. Yeah. Mm. yeah, very dangerous. This is also inside position, by the way. Like, I was trying to explain this to one of my um, other students. This. See how my arms are on the inside here? This is also a really strong position. I can um, shut down the clinch. I can drop him <laughs> over as yeah. well. Yeah. So depending on your height, your stature, and what your strength is, like let's say I'm tall-ish, yeah? I'm massive. <laughs> but he's not that tall. So um, I'm tall-ish, and I don't really want to be going down for these kind of positions here. But if my opponent was smaller, and the sense of gravity is really lower, and I'm here, why would I try to fight up here? Yeah, it doesn't really make too much sense. So I want to be able to fight depending on what my advantages are. Mm -hmm. But the key point is always arms on the inside. Okay? Inside. Now, how to strengthen the inside position? It's also being able to defend the inside position. It's not using um, like the small muscles in your arms. It's using like your back and your posture to maintain the strength um, in that position. Okay, you can explain this bit. <laughs> All right, so. Utilizing your back, mm. because we are using our arms, beginners tend to mistake using arm strength and then using the whole body to strengthen the movement, all right? So when we are in a clinch position, for example, inside arm control, like so, mm -hmm. all right? People tend to use just their arms, where you want to actually use your back, all right? So to engage your back, you can straighten your arms. You want to imagine that you're bending a bar like so all right that will activate your lats mm. and then in this position you want to bring your elbows forward and in so that you can squeeze in and almost like have good posture mm. and really lift your chest yeah come through boom you want to look like a t-rex or a prey mantis like so and that will activate your back more all right whereas if you just use your arms it's very easy to manipulate the rest of your body mm. okay mm. so when spring gets the inside control she wants to squeeze, bring her elbows in. She wants to then lift her chest and push her elbows through. Cool. That will then make it harder for me to then firstly defend, uh, get on the inside, because she can use her elbow like so. All right. 
Yeah. Or from here, just control my body. All right. Up, up. Now I am a lot bigger than her. Okay, but it's making it very hard for me to actually move. Mm. Okay. Mm. From this position here, it's really easy to move the person's body. All right. So if you want to mani manipulate them so that you can get a, a more a better strike on, or you can stop them from trying to clinch you back, this is where you start. Mm. Okay. Firstly, I can't get her head. All right, that's probably the safest part. Mm -hmm. she, I can't now knee her or strike her, mm -hmm. but now it's making it easy for her to actually move me. Oh. Next part, while you're in this position, or in any clinch position, your hips are really important. You want to imagine that you have water inside your hips, like a basin. All right, you're full of water in here, and you want to keep it underneath your shoulders at all times. All right. If you move your hips further out, of course, you tip water out, mm. but it makes it easier to bring your head down, all right? Putting yourself in a position to get knee, mm. all right? Or elbow. And if you bring it up too far, all right, it's easier to push you back, mm -hmm. okay? So always trying to keep yourself center and on top of your legs. Now, Spring mentioned it before. There's no stance in your clinch, okay? So there isn't no orthodox or southpaw. It's just square. And then it will depend on where your opponent goes, uh, will then determine if you do this or this or stay here. Mm. Okay? Engage and embrace the contact. Okay? So, what I mean by that is keep yourself upright. You will get used to it, but if she tries to knee you, Ooh. you almost want to move yourself into it, Brace. keeping your posture strong. Mm. All right? Because if you move away, like we explained before, Ooh. It will hurt even more. Yes. All right. So keep yourself up, nice and strong, chest back. Uh, sorry, back involved, chest up, ready to go. Mm. All right. Now we have two positions that we're going to work on today, which is one arm control. Arm inside, two arms inside. Cool. And mm. the next one is straight behind the back, the pummel. Is back that pummel? Of the pummel? Uh, I don't really know. They call it like when I started learning, they said it was plum, but plum kind of generally means. Clinching sometimes, Just so cheap, yeah. yeah. So I think referring to it as kind of like two hands at the back of the head is normally what I say. Yeah. So two hands back of the head from here in that position. If you have your gloves on, you'll cross them over like this. That's fine. Normally, when this position here, this is a good position to have, but not as strong as turning the thumb, like the back of your thumb, towards or onto their heads. Yeah. So from that position here, one thumb. That's right. And then pull towards you using your elbows to leverage, yeah? Um, just a little pointer when you're doing the clinching. So one thing you know that you need to stay inside, right? So inside position at all times. Whatever inside position looks like for you, could be this, could be this, it could be this, um, could be this. You have to fight for the inside position. And number two, you take opportunities when your partner makes mistakes, yeah? So if I feel like they're making mistakes and they're not protecting their head, I move and take a better position, yeah? And take a better position to break their posture and to throw uh, knees and elbows, yep. Mm. So I'm here, let's say I got inside position, they're still pretty strong, and then they make a mistake, they're not protecting their neck or they shift their posture in a bad way. I get a good grip, but I can take my time here. I've got one hand controlling back of the head. If I wait for another mistake or I create the opening, bum, take the head, yeah? Once I have the head, normally here, that person goes into high alert. Like, of course, right? Because someone's holding your head. Yeah, so the pushing will happen, like the pulling away will happen, so the transitions have to be fast in the clinch, okay? So <laughs> you want to hold the back of the head, and now when you've got this dominant position, just stay calm, yeah? Stay calm, keep your head down, don't let them push your face away. And then when you're ready, thumb, back of your thumb, stick it to their head, and now push your elbows forward, and drive your legs back, boom. Break posture, yeah? If they're really, really strong and you can't pull them down in one go, tug, 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 little pulses to break their posture down, yeah? But the, yes, you go. Yeah, no, I was just say like, the key point is that to change from palm facing you to back of the thumb, boop, this way, yeah? So, why we grab the head, mm. all right? Is firstly, yes, you can knee, like so. Boom, uh, all right? <laughs> but as soon as you grab someone's head, it's really easy to move the rest of the body mm. because wherever the head goes, the body is going to follow. All right, so it's really important if as soon as you lock onto the head, all right, it's your time to just control them. Mm. All right, mm. always try to at least have one hand 
on them. Mm. If they're very good at clinching, they probably won't allow you to do it. Yeah. All right. But from here, the best option is probably to knee or elbow. Okay. But you can just move the head to the floor, which makes it very easy to get it to score. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Reason why we use arm control, all right, is that this position is really easy to control the body. Mm. Okay. So let's say clinching is all about. It's still fighting, all right? If she if spring is pushing me back, okay, like so, I want to do the opposite and push her back, mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm. Or because you are controlling the arms, you can use their body to feel to do different things to manipulate them. So, mm. for example, if she is pushing me back, I can either turn, all right, I can push her back like what it, what we just did before, mm. or I can pull it down, mm -hmm. all right? which then gives you opportunity to elbow, to knee, and get yourself back into inside control. Yeah. Or do something even more devastating, like grabbing the head mm. and, yeah, hurting them. Yeah. You know? So, yes, one of it is also technique. Like, one thing in clinching is technique and what to do. Like, what are your go-to positions? Um, but two, I think what you brought up is also being able to feel what's going on. Mm. When you're learning the clinch or when you're a beginner to clinching, it's very easy to make mistakes. Like, I over-focus on the feet. I start looking down. My head becomes open to get pulled down. Yeah, because my posture is broken this way. Uh -huh. Boom, boom. Yeah. Which then makes it easy to do this. Yeah. For me, I always lose my hips, which mm. is, makes it easy for me to get pulled uh, to get pulled down. Mm. All right. Uh, always try and keep yourself up. Engage yeah. your core. You will get used to it, but if someone tries to knee you, you don't want to. Uh, soften and weaken. Oh, that one got that really don't, hard. Don't make, basically, don't make the shape oh, of... Don't God. make it easier for them to knee you. Otherwise, it'll hurt more. Yeah? Again, you want to do the opposite. You want to bounce into it. And brace, bounce into brace it. and push yes. yourself yes, into yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Right? <laughs> Imagine that you are a brick wall. Mm -hmm. Be a brick wall and move into it. Mm. Boom. Pop. So forth, Pop. okay? Mm. Again, having inside is really important because after she knees, she can grab my oh. head. She can then do something even more destructive, and then that's the end of the fight, which mm. is always the goal. Mm -hmm. So I think some takeaways is, yes, hand positioning uh, details that will help you strengthen your clinch. How to use the bigger muscles in your body to be stronger in general posture. Mm -hmm. um, feeling in the clinch as well, not being too stiff. If I'm like a stiff block like this, I'm really easy to move. So I yeah. push, 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 like I'll be able to get turned off, yeah? It is It is a mixture of the two. Yeah, like a mixture um, of when to stiffen, when to relax, when to move with it. Um, and then also, what was the last one I was thinking about? Bracing, really important. And oh, yes, really important, sticking to your partner, yeah? When I'm clinching or as a beginner clinching, this is what I normally see. <laughs> like, you, can you feel, not can you, can, you can't feel it, but can you see how like, there's a big release between my movements. Big release. Big release means big opportunity for me to get hurt, okay? So actually, being sticky to your partner will keep you safer, yeah? So I'm here, position here. Okay, even if I'm in the outside position, it's okay. I just stick to him. Be sticky with my movements, yeah? <laughs> stick to him, stick to him. Everything's really sticky, yeah? We're like glued to each other, moving together, moving together, yeah. Uh, being stiff and then Lucid at the same time. Yeah. You want to be lucid if they're trying to attack you. Mm. Right? So if she tries to grab your head, you want to be able to move yes, and adjust. Yes, yeah. right? And then when it's time to be stiff, is that if you see a strike coming, Boom. engage and embrace. Mm. Right? Mm. Or if it's a bit of a, it's just a dance, it's a bit of a battle. If, she, if you need to be stiff, it's stiff because you're going to do something in return. Mm. Boom, like so, mm. or they're trying to stop. Mm. All right? Yeah. Uh, every other time, you're just going with it, it, going with it, yeah. yeah. Um, I think one thing that I saw in the classes yesterday, just one little thing, is that yes, we're squared on. Like we talk about clinching, like, oh, everyone, just keep your hips squared on. The reason why we're squared on is, or we're not side on all the time, is because we're easy to sweep. <laughs> Boom, yeah? And we're also in a more exposed position to get knee. But in saying that, you want to be able to, in the clinch, use your hip turning and your shoulder turning to defend and also to get better position, yeah? So see, when he was uh, inside position, I'm here. If I was going to just stay squared on and try and push, it's really hard for me to get to the inside position, yeah? So to transition or the in-between steps, I use my hip and my shoulder turning a lot. Also, when I'm on inside, when I'm on the outside, hip and shoulder turn is to also stay safe. Yeah, so for example, 
He is, um, let's say you take arm control. Okay, what am I in danger of right now? Elbow. Boom, okay. I lose this grip, my face is gone. But I know that, yeah? And if I just stay squared on and be like, I'm gonna keep perfect square on, I'm in trouble, okay? But in knowing that, I can do this. I can use the ropes, I can push him against the ropes. I can keep my head on his chest to shut down the elbow, yeah? You can use your shoulder you to can use your, annoy yeah. me. <laughs> you can use your shoulder to annoy me, but I can also press my head into the body to stay safe. Yeah. And then in doing that, it'll buy me time to change position. So yes, you want to stay squared on, but also comes down to manipulating your hips and shoulders to move and to keep you safe. Yeah, yeah so mm. let's say being square. Yeah. All right. Being square, okay, makes you uh, vulnerable to being kneed on each side. All right. Unless you need my hip. All right. <laughs> but, but, but you can defend, all right? Mm. You can defend, for example, we can defend left and right, making it hard for you to move left or right, all right? But the issue with this is that it's easy to get pushed back and forward. Oh, all right. Mm. Exactly. So when you're in that position, if you do feel like you're getting pushed back, then you take a step back mm. and you embrace it, push mm -hmm, it forward mm -hmm, like so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this would be easier to move left to right. Mm. Okay. The weakness is, is that it's easier to move backwards and forwards. Mm. All right. And vice versa. If I go this way, if I have my stance like so, Okay, it's easy to get dumped onto one side, mm -hmm. like so, or go the other way, mm -hmm. all right? But it's harder to push me backwards or forwards. So yeah. it's always a mixture of just playing with your feet to keeping your hips underneath your shoulders, mm. all right? And then utilizing this. Mm. Yeah, so I think key takeaway is to have your go-to to positions. Control the body. Yeah, go-to positions. Like I personally like starting here, starting here, but going for this. Yeah, because I'm generally taller than a lot of my opponents. So this is the only way I go to and I feel safest as well. Mm -hmm. um, so these are my go-to positions. After that, you have like what you like to do from there. Do you well, want to break the head down or whatever it is? Um, but yeah, for example, your go-to. My general position would be to the inside. Mm. I usually like to have one on the outside so like so. under the Under arm. here. Yeah. And I just place my head uh, so it's safe ow. and it's uncomfortable. Yep. Normally because clinching is not my forte. Uh, I try and get the ref to break it shut straight it away, shut yeah. it down, so that I can go back to striking. Mm. But oh. this is a really good place to finish the video, so thanks guys, <laughs> thanks for everything, no, and no, I'll no. see you guys later.